So today we are at my favorite park in San Marcos. I say that with all of the parks I go to, but this is one of the college kids' favorite parts um, of San Marcos because this is right on the college campus. If you guys didn't know, San Marcos is a college town uh, with Texas State University. So this park is on campus which is pretty cool but it's pretty much the population of it is all young people you're gonna see people walk on this bridge a lot and you'll probably i think it's parent cheers today or something that's going on so there's gonna be a lot of people coming in and out of these shots but it just adds to the ambiance of things so today i wanted to talk a little bit about things i didn't know as a pilot before i was a pilot uh, for all you non-pilots out there or people who were just getting started that don't know what to expect or just some cool things that people didn't know about flying and whatnot. So today, since I had the day off, I figured I'll take you guys to a pretty nice place and, you know, kind of have an off day with you guys because I don't really have much else to do. So let's get into the video. So starting out, I'm first going to talk about my journey and how you know, I chose this pathway for myself because um, a lot of people ask, like, how do you even get interested in something like flying? Like, where do you even start? And so I started when I was in high school because I was a STEM student. <laughs> and, um, you know, if you guys don't know what STEM is, it's like science, technology, engineering, and math. And it's just an extension onto your high school classes. And so I did that, like, just wanting to study the universe. I went into earth and space science because I just love the universe. I love knowing what was going around me and, you know, the great beyond and whatnot. And so I decided to do STEM and then STEM gave me the ground school for the private knowledge for flight training. I did that over a course of a year. I honestly was not crazy about it at all. I, I kind of thought it was dumb because we were doing all the ground training with just flight simulators, not even seeing a real airplane and you know everything was just taught in class and i think that's a horrible way to start out your flight training especially if you're going from zero experience because you're not going to understand any of the things he's telling you without the real world experience of getting in the cockpit talking to atc experiencing the weather you know turbulence and experiencing how different weathers affect your aircraft and whatnot so i mean when I took that class, I was just like not into it. And then that was sophomore year. And then come around senior year, you know, that was when I started getting out of my like high school mindset and starting being like, huh, what do I want to do once I get out of here? And I was heavily, heavily wanting, you know, to go to college, I guess, and go to like this big school and, you know, just party away or whatever. Not really. Um, I just didn't really know what I wanted to do. And then I started thinking back to the flight training and, you know, I've always felt like a very free spirit. I felt like I was like meant to go out in the world and see everything. And, you know, I think it also had to do with the town I lived in. I lived in Davidsonville, Maryland, you know, where there's honestly not much to do out there so i also was in the mindset of just being so like outgrown of where i live it's just like i need to go and experience new things and whatnot so i applied for this big uh flight school and i'm not going to name them but i applied for them and i didn't think i would get in i was just kind of testing the waters and in the meantime i applied to like five or six different colleges around me because I, I didn't think I would move out of state at all. So I just applied to aviation colleges because I was like, okay, maybe a pilot is being worth it. Like I can go travel. Like, and that was when the, the bug kicked in. Well, people talk about like the aviation bug and that's kind of how aviation got me. It's just kind of a thing where you feel like you've been bitten by a bug and all you can think about is aviation, flying and whatnot. And I just wanted so badly to be in that world ended up applying to a bunch of colleges. I got accepted into a bunch of them. I got accepted into all of them besides one and that was like my the University of Maryland which is impossible to get into. And then I was like trying to decide on which college I wanted to go to and then I realized that flight training is like 300 grand if I go to college, get a degree and get all my licenses and I was not trying to do that. I was not trying to spend that much money, um, especially when you don't even need a degree to be a pilot. 
and it would take me four years instead of one. So I eventually get accepted into this flight school that would give me a loan for my flight training. They only had schools in Texas and like California and Arizona. So I kind of like, it was a big decision and a lot of people weren't happy with my decision, but I decided to go to San Marcos, Texas for the flight school and I got my private and whatnot. Um, and that's kind of where that story and now I'm here and I work at an FBO, which I make connections all the time in the aviation world. If you guys didn't know, um, aviation is all about the people you know, which is quite, quite sad. Um, aviation is just the people you know and how many connections you can get. Because at the end of your training, you it's going to be hard to find a job if you have no connections because people would much rather know the pilots. People would much, much rather like know the people they're employing, which is true for everything, but very true for pilots because it's a very big job um, of responsibility. I work at an FBO right now and all I do is make connections and that's how I'm able to make these YouTube videos for you guys is because I just meet so many nice cool people that are my friends and you know they like adventuring too and they own their own planes so that's basically how I fly right now and you know in the future I'm definitely going to um, start renting out planes and then start flying them solo just because I want to get more comfortable in my flying skills now that I've flown so many different planes it's hard to kind of stay grounded to one plane which is important because you need to stay proficient in at least one plane for like takeoffs and landings and whatnot and so that's my future plan is to start renting out planes going on solo adventures to like far out places like New Orleans spending the night taking you know making my vlogs and then still earning that experience and then just you know flying back in the morning and then editing my videos at work but that's pretty much um, my youtube does go well there's also going to be the aspect if my youtube does really really well there's going to be the aspect of me uh renting out planes by myself and then flying just cross country and never having a home base for at least a year and then just me hopping around from state to state i is what my like ultimate dream is to do but you know that's only a year traveling or in the future i'm going to try and go private jets that that has been my ultimate dream is to just go private jets um i've never really been too keen on the airlines i kind of just thought uh before before I got into aviation, pretty much anything you find on YouTube or on the internet is saying you have to become like airline pilot to make good money and you know to travel and have a set schedule. But in my experience, there's just so many other different pathways that private is the ultimate goal. But you know, I wouldn't mind doing something else if something else pops up just because there's so many niches out there in aviation and so many different jobs that it's crazy. And you know, there and people if you don't want to do it for a career you know i know plenty of people pretty much everyone i've flown with uh doesn't do aviation as a main job they have a side they have like their main business or their doctors or you know they have their own business and then they just own planes and fly for themselves or for, for business just to get themselves around because they don't want to fly commercially or whatever but there you know there's plenty of pathways out there for you guys um that was my story a little bit that was like a very brief overlook of my story if you guys want more of my story i might make a separate video um but just let me know so the first thing i didn't know about being a pilot is that when we have overcast days like this we with my specific license i have my private license which means i can only fly visual flight rules which means i can't really fly directly in a cloud and so normally we have to dodge clouds if it gets in our pathway just because when you do go in a cloud the visibility is zero which you know it's not easy to fly that way it gets you very spatially disoriented um with your surroundings just being strictly white um so that's what my next license i'm working on is the instrument license where i can just fly directly through the clouds and if even if it's zero visibility sometimes i can just land at any airport no matter the fog no matter the clouds so that's what i'm working on next but i've learned that there are ways if you just want to get your recreational license to get around that cloud rule you know wherever you go there are going to be clouds and it does get in the way of flight planning and sometimes you will have to cancel your flights but with my license if i want to go up and say it's like a 
you know kind of cloudy day like this or it's totally overcast with a couple of like little spaces in between you can like look up in the sky like right now um if we look up right here we see that there's clouds here and then the empty space over there don't mind me pointing at those people but in that empty space we can just look outside and be like is there any holes that we can go through and like go through to go over and a lot of the times there will be so if you go outside and you're like okay there's a hole we only have a small chance of getting up there if we go now and so we'll just you know take off immediately after we say a hole and then try and go through it and then once we're through it we're over the clouds you know we're not uh disintegrating our visibility any longer so i just thought that was a really cool aspect because it really gets you thinking um of like the clouds when you actually go outside and looking at them most of the time when you're not a pilot you're looking at the clouds and being like oh that that's kind of cool but they have no effect on me but you know as a pilot you really get to worry about the weather a lot and that's why you see pilots checking the weather all the time but we're not just checking the weather if it's going to be hot or cold outside or the temperature we're checking the cloud ceilings to see if we can even get over that or if the if the tops of the ceilings are too high where our service like we can't even go up above them well, is a problem and then we also look for icing levels at different altitudes and we're just looking at so many different aspects of the weather you would never guess we check the like temperature dew point to see if there's like going to be visible fog and visibility has to do with a lot if, if we're gonna fly or not and so do the clouds if there's any thunderstorms in the area if there's any lightning strikes like basically any thunderstorms you can't really go into and then if there are thunderstorms we have to pay attention to as to where they are so that if we really do need to go uh we can literally just divert ourselves around the thunderstorm and then just go around it um just like if a road was closed that means just a part of the sky is closed for the most part but i just think that is such a cool aspect of being a pilot and things that non-pilots don't really understand when we like look in the sky and be like oh can we fly today or if we're looking at like 10 different weather th things that's just mean we're just making sure we're safe to fly and weather is not an aspect of it okay so my next point is just how accessible the world is to you um when i i came to texas a year ago and i had never ever been to texas i had no clue what to expect and the one thing i learned about texas is that it's big like it is massive it, i used to live in maryland and you know maryland takes maybe an hour or two to drive the whole thing texas takes you maybe a day to drive the entire texas thing and i live right in central texas so you know we do have a lot to do around here but flying wise it is or we do have a lot to do around here but you know we're kind of just stuck in the middle and we can't go out to like the beach so easily if you if you like aren't a pilot and like it's just harder to get around because texas is so big and there's so much to do but it's just so hard getting around it and like making time for it it's not an easy day trip to go up to like dallas or go up to like laredo or you know corpus christi um so it just is nice being a pilot and um cost of flight is not that expensive it's it's like pretty up there it's not the cheapest thing in the world but you know if you work full time and you really want to make aviation your passion or just a hobby you know it, you can do it once a week you can do it like once a month depending on your budget and you know that is enough for some people you don't have to fly every day but yeah so i just wanted to get on the topic of like once you make friends in aviation and you know you start flying bigger and better planes you obviously can go out a lot far farther i'm definitely discovering with all these different planes i'm flying you know how fast we can get places um one of me and my friends that i fly with they love going to the beach but the beach is almost four to six hours from where we are and we do not have that time to drive and we're pilots so we're like okay let's just fly there and um it's nice because it turns a six hour drive into 30 minutes and you know we can go out to like new orleans we can go out to different states and whatnot but even being a pilot texas is just so big that it's hard to get out of 
and you know that is just something funny to me is that even though we can get places in like 30 minutes instead of four hours it would still take us at least two hours to get fully out of texas even in the um, even in the uh navajo i flew with it still takes quite a while and it's just it's crazy to me just how big texas is because it could be its own country um but i love it you know you see all the places i go to and it is just a gorgeous gorgeous state Okay, so another thing that pi future pilots have to be wary of is your confidence levels after you become a pilot, after you start flying, because, you know, when you, when people first hear, like, oh, you're flying planes, it is such just a weird and just crazy thing for somebody to do, and people don't really understand the fundamentals of it all, so once you do like go from the world of not knowing anything and thinking flying is this complicated complicated like terrible thing and going from actually understanding how to land how to like know where you are you know after your first solo too and then after you get your first license like my ego was just at an all-time high it's not even my ego it was my confidence just because i was like wow i just you know Went, did this huge feat and got my license and now I know how to fly planes and I can fly wherever I want in the world but that also correlates to my driving skills because after after I learned like the fundamentals of flying and knew how to do like the basic things like take off and land I would just drive so so fast in my car just because I was like okay I know how to fly a plane now and flying a plane is not easy at all and you have to practice so many maneuvers and whatnot and you know driving you literally just turn left right and then your gas pedal flying you have so many other instruments you have so many other things to worry about if you do like a simple turn then you have so many different axes is that when you once you're done flying a plane and you get in your car you you just feel like you could drive a hundred miles down the road and do these like quick turns and whatever i it, it felt like more of a phase to me because i that only lasted like maybe a month or two uh, and that was when I was first starting out and I just felt so happy I knew how to fly and you know correlated to me driving crazy and fast but now that I've been in that w in the aviation world for a year now it's like I don't know I've just kind of grown out of that but that is something that at least I noticed when I was you know transitioning into being like the official pilot um, you just drive crazy and there's so many memes about it and I think it's so funny because um, a lot of pilots do just drive they fly really safely and they fly really good but when the second they get in their car you see them like whipping around just like full full fucking floor it basically and it's just funny because you know they never have gotten in, in any crashes or anything so you know they're they're fine and I I trust them to, or I guess I don't trust them but you know they trust themselves enough to drive that crazily because they're so confident in their planes and the things we do in the planes are really hard so yeah on to the next so another cool aspect about things I didn't know about being a pilot and I feel like this one would be kind of a given but how casual flying becomes to you after which is which is a given but you know the distances we go and like just being like oh i gotta go on a flight tomorrow to you know all the way across texas or go to a different state or whatever and it's just so casual to you to get in you know a plane and then go to your destination so fast that everything else becomes a little dull at a point and that's kind of what I'm going through because when I was in flight school, the uh, problem was that I was doing all these cool things, going 10,000 feet or 5,000 feet in the sky and going places in under an hour that would take normally like three or four hours to get to. And it just became such a normal that it made driving like so kind of boring and going places by foot. And once you stop flying for a little bit, I, I like don't fly that consistently anymore but once you do stop flying like that everything becomes a little more dull and it's like you just kind of miss the skies it's a little bit of an addiction to you and you know it takes your money it takes a lot of your money but it also takes 
it just changes your world so much that you know you kind of start to miss it a lot and it's like a craving you need to have but that's another part that is just super cool about flying so one thing i forgot to mention in the video is that the airports we land at have no security at all which is super nice we obviously don't land at international airports like austin or whatnot so when we land at these airports we have nobody bringing us through security nobody checking the planes and i've had a couple you know instances where we need to bring lots of water we need to bring lots of things that we could not bring into the airport at all you know i know plenty i don't personally carry one myself but i know plenty of personal pilots that you know might carry a firearm with them and that's allowed to a team which is super cool and also scary at the first same time because our security are the linemen you know the line service that fills your plane up and it's just super weird going from like before being a pilot saying going to an airport and having to go through two hours of security and to not bring any liquids you know not to bring any like metal or electronics or whatever the security protocol is nowadays it's really nice to be able to bring whatever you want what type whatever food you want you know and really nobody checks us there are ramp checkers that occasionally check people's like licenses check their flight plan and whatnot if they have one and you know it's a it's an awesome perk just because it saves you so much time if you charter out privately and you're a passenger and you're not a pilot and you don't want to go through security you don't have to all you do is you can drive your car up right to the plane and then load anything you want in that jet and the pilots normally don't care i know they pl a lot of private pilots carry a lot of alcohol which isn't you know airlines carry alcohol too but it's just nice being able to carry your own bottles if you're a passenger obviously you can bring your own alcohol you know the regulations on alcohol is really weird um i'm not gonna go all <laughs> over all of that but obviously the pilots can't be drinking it but if you're a passenger in a private airline in a private jet you can't do it in like a cessna um at least i don't think so it's not in the regulations for private pilots so that is just another factor to becoming a pilot that is just something crazy to me that we just don't have any sort of security i mean pilots not everyone's trustworthy so that's where i'm like does that make sense so that is just something really cool that i thought was you know cool and niche about being a pilot just because we get to skip security <laughs> um i think this will be the last really cool thing that i found out about aviation before i knew about it and that is fbo's fbo's is the place that i currently work at and they're basically just you know the way we train as pilots we do not go out to international airports which are technically class bravo and class charlie airports um and that's like the bigger airports austin um baltimore jfk and whatnot those are the bigger international airports that you buy your regular airline tickets for the places we go out to we go out to the smaller airports i suppose and those are generally for like general aircraft that aren't commercial like big jets and that's where i work the san marcos airport you know the class d's the class e's the uh, class g airports that's generally where we land because it's easier and when we land there there are pilot lounges and that's what a fbo is it's basically a pilot lounge where you get your fuel you know you call in you get your fuel you can get food there normally they offer free like water free snacks free food most of the time another thing they offer is free cars they're called courtesy cars that's because pilots when we fly in we obviously don't have cars and ubers can get really expensive and if it's in the middle of nowhere sometimes there are no ubers so you're basically stranded courtesy cars are nice because we have two of them they're nice traverses like 2021 traverses 2022 traverses like nice i've heard fbo's give out like lexuses for courtesy cars and basically different fbo's have different time limits my our fbo's time limit is two hours so um say if i fly into my airport and i need somewhere to drive into i will just ask for the courtesy car it's completely free to use i just have to fill out a form um i have to 
and that's just for me to go get some food or something or just to explore the city and ex explore the town we're at without having to be just stuck at the airport um and if we have like a layover or something we can just go out and drive their car and then back and we don't have to pay for gas or anything which is really super super nice um and super convenient for pilots um they are first come first serve but normally we do have them available so i just thought that was so just so fantastic just get free cars as nice as nicer than my car nicer than ha half of america's cars at a point um but just and to get a lexus too for um two hours i mean normally we can have them for a lot longer depending on how busy the certain fbo is but fbo's are just such nice lounges we have our own pilot lounge sometimes in them um and they cater to you so much and you know they can rent out cars for you if you need it for more than a day or two but yeah that's that's just a little bit of the perks that comes with fbo's there's obviously tons and tons of other perks that i'm probably missing out on but that's one of my favorite parts of being a pilot is just going flying somewhere and going to this new fbo that is just so nice and just like they try and accommodate you as a pilot so much and just the fact that they have so many free things because i am a sucker for free things you know i'm a very cheap person or like i just like not spending money which is everybody is i think that i'm gonna wrap up the video now but i just wanted to make this video to show you guys like some of the things that people don't really see when they're not a pilot and i just wanted to kind of you know share my story as well because i know when i wasn't a pilot i had nobody that wanted to become a pilot either like i had no nothing around me that had anything to do with aviation and that made me so sad and i felt so isolated because i had this big dream of becoming a pilot and i had nobody around me to talk to about it and it seems so out of place because where i come from being a pilot there it's just very unheard of you know it is just super super unheard of to even think of becoming a pilot and not many people do it especially at my age which was the big problem with me yeah i'm gonna wrap up the video but if you guys did like my video please make sure to like and subscribe i definitely um want to start making more flying vlogs but i'm not sure when i'll have another uh flying vlog out just because i've been su super busy trying to work and you know maintain my schedule if you guys want me to continue making flying vlogs here's my venmo this is pretty much the only way i know how uh this the pretty much the only way for you guys to support me right now if you guys have any other ideas on how to support me let me know uh, but yeah in the future i definitely want to start renting up planes by myself and you know flying in to uh, different places and if you guys want to see those videos you know be sure to at least like and subscribe and you know if you do want to support me um that would be great but if not i do hope you like this video and you know these videos are really fun to make so let me know if i should be doing anything in the future and i'll see you guys later